what's crazy about outward appearances? They never tell the full story. I look around this sanctuary and I see young, vibrant faces. But behind each one is a story. And I am sure in a crowd this size, many of you have experienced pain and heartache more than we can even imagine. Since looks can be deceiving, here's a little of my story. I grew up in Knoxville, came to Carson Newman, and met my college sweetheart. We went to seminary together in Atlanta, and then we were married. We had just celebrated our fourth wedding anniversary and moved back to Knoxville to each pursue our careers. We were in the process of building an amazing home. You might even call it the American dream. At this time, my husband was still working for a Christian nonprofit called ASP, and he was headed to install running water for a family who had never had it. Let me just stop right there. Did you all know that there are still families in Tennessee today that do not have the luxury of running water? People in Tennessee. I know I didn't know that. So he was headed to install sinks and toilets with a team so the family could enjoy this luxury that we take for granted. At 9 p.m. that night, I received the call that would change my life forever. Ryan had, be, had been killed on impact in a car wreck. My world was shattered and time stopped. I was now a 28-year-old widow. Here's an excerpt from my journal in the time shortly after his death. Life used to be so black and white to me. I loved it that way. I was convinced that God controlled my life and would work for my good because I loved him. Romans 8, 28, y'all. But then reality struck and I learned something even greater. God is bigger than only wanting good for my life. God is greater and more intriguing than I'll ever be able to understand. While I do not believe that God causes bad things to happen, I do believe that God walks with us and weeps with us. God walks life's journey of heartache and grief with us. I know God has never left me throughout this horrific tragedy, and I know God cried loud crocodile tears when one of God's greatest servants was taken from earth way too soon. I know God weeps with me and Jesus walks with me. And I want to share another small excerpt of truth that I learned during my time of grief two and a half years ago. I wrote, Grieving and celebrating each moment, that's what life's about. I have learned that this is a truth I carry with me each day, a transformational truth. Many years before my grief story, when I was a student here, I learned a valuable lesson from my mentor, Dr. Don Garner. We grieve even the small things in life. I remember he told me, even when something good happens, like you get a new pair of tennis shoes, there's a brief moment, a grief moment, where we acknowledge the goodness of our old shoes, we are thankful for what they did for us, and we grieve letting them go. But we celebrate new, the new shoes that we have. Now, I'm not saying we have a party for our shoes, because that would just be weird. But you may take like 10 to 20 seconds and just reflect. It just happens. We are constantly grieving and celebrating parts of our life. And maybe instead of shoes, you need to think about people and relationships that we grieve. You might grieve leaving friends at a high school that you loved, but you celebrate coming to college. This pattern of grief and celebration marks our days. Grief and celebration continue to mark my days today. Ryan died July 20th, 2017, and today there are still moments of grief and celebration, pain and triumph. In fact, the last time I stood in this pulpit, I was preaching his funeral. He was right there. Grief and triumph, it comes full circle. 
I tell you this story, my story, not so you'll take pity on me or to make you tear up before your 1030 classes. I tell you this story so that you might go out into the days and weeks ahead and show more grace, kindness, and compassion to those around you. We never know the battle the person sitting beside us is facing. We don't know what triumph or tragedy they just walked through. And I believe it's our calling as Christians and as decent human beings to be kind to the people around us. People are what life is about for me. Relationships fill my days, not just personally, but professionally as well. I own a business that focuses on coaching people in their relationships to be the best that they can be. I offer premarital counseling, marriage counseling, relationship counseling. Oh, and I officiate weddings. So if it has to do with a relationship, I'm all in. I've found through working with my couples that they desire guidance in all of their relationships, both romantic and not. Every relationship is made up of people experiencing joy and grief, triumph and tragedy. So that can make relationships tough to navigate. If I were to choose one scripture to encapsulate a motto for all relationships, I'd choose the golden rule in Matthew 7, 12. And everything do to others as you would have them do to you. And if you need more biblical reasons why you should treat people well, I encourage you to read any of the New Testament teachings of Jesus. So, now that you know my credentials, let's talk relationships. Romantic, friendships, family. Relationships matter. They are what make up our days and our lives. Choosing healthy romantic relationships and friendships and creating boundaries within family relationships shape our lives. Let's start with family relationships, the first ones that you ever saw. Family relationships can be some of the toughest to navigate. Once you move away, often you realize that not all families are like yours. And maybe some of the normal practices in your home weren't really that healthy. For example, not everyone's parents have knocked down drag out fights. Not all siblings act like yours. Some people have great relationships with siblings, while others have to distance themselves in order to escape toxic and enabling relationships. If any of these sound like your family, you're not alone. Right now, the other students in this sanctuary the people in the sanctuary have these and much more complicated relationships with their families. Like I said, family is tough. And I haven't even mentioned abuse and trauma and betrayal, abandonment, divorce, and a plethora of other reasons loving your family is hard. Setting boundaries with our family members is key and choosing to distance ourselves from toxic relationships while also showing love and care is possible. Super tough, but possible. Learning the balance of loving our families and ourselves is something that can take trial and error in decades. The biggest tip I can give is always choose to offer truckloads of grace to yourself and to your family. Remembering that people, that the people who raised you aren't perfect and they have their own wounds and insecurities. Remembering that we are not perfect either, we don't know it all, but we do deserve to be treated with love and respect. Family is hard and it's also often a gift. For some of you, you'll be heading home to Thanksgiving soon and this will be the first major day that you've celebrated with your family since going off to college. When you return to your hometown, things might feel different. You may notice things you've never noticed before, both positive and negative. 
It's nice to be around familiar people that you love, and yet it's maddening to be around the people who mess you up, who taught you the bad habits that you normalized and now have to unlearn. Going home is not always fun, and sometimes it's tough, but no matter what you feel about your family of origin, I want you to remember that you can love your family and also grow to become different than them. You may realize that their beliefs are no longer your beliefs, and you can still love them. You may realize you've outgrown their theology and developed your own while here at Carson Newman, and you can still love your family. The cheesy yet true fact is that no matter what family we come from, we have a God that stands with us through it all. A God we can call on in the middle of the night who will sit with us as we cry. So if your family life is complicated, I pray you will learn to find deep peace and love in God's welcoming arms. Now we're going to move on to romantic relationships. Oh, college romance. <laughs> it can feel so much more serious than high school, and yet you still have so much life ahead of you. Trust me. When I asked my Instagram followers what they would tell their 20-year-old selves, a recurring theme were statements like, don't marry the first person you meet in college. And... You don't have to find your soulmate in college. They also said, it's okay to be single. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't stay in an abusive relationship. He doesn't love you, and you deserve more. I'm going to say that one again. Don't stay in an abusive relationship. He doesn't love you, and you deserve more. And boundaries are healthy. So many people responded to my prompts. And I can't read all of them, but I'm actually going to put them on my Instagram stories later tonight um, if you want to see them. And they'll put that up in a minute. So, dating is complicated. And remember that Carson Newman is a small pond in the great ocean of life. There are thousands of people that you can choose from. And many of you might meet your sweethearts here. But it's not a must, and there are so many other options out there. And guys, you're awesome, but did you all know that males' prefrontal cortexes don't fully develop until they're 25? 25, okay? That's the part of the brain that tells them to be careful, make good choices, and not jump off cliffs. It's not fully developed till 25. So I'm just saying, if that part's not developed till after they graduate college, consider that when you're making life-changing choices, okay? Marriage is a life-changing choice. So lastly, when considering relationships, people change. College changes people. Your first big job will change you. Grief and pain and joy and circumstance and location, it'll all change you. So make sure you know who you are before you choose to saddle up and marry somebody. Okay. Now let's talk about friends. Choosing friends that make you be your best self is important. Sometimes we outgrow friendships. Sometimes friendships push us to be better people. Both are a part of growth. Remember that the people you spend your days with will affect you. Consider this. When you hang out with, like, really negative people, how do you feel after? Do you feel totally drained and feel like the world is out to get you? That's because the people we surround ourselves with have a huge impact on us. You are in a perfect place to find great friends here at Carson Newman. There are so many opportunities on campus
to meet people who share common interests with you. Opportunities to develop deep friendships with people who live next door to you in your dorm. The possibilities are endless. Leave your dorm room and meet someone new. It might be tough at first, but you will be so thankful that you stepped out and met new friends. You might just meet your best friend who will be by your side for decades. And finally, you know what's the toughest part of loving people? Choosing to love yourself. Being who you are can be tough. But I promise being true to yourself is always worth it. Pretending to be like everyone else is easy. But shining your unique light, that's tough. The scriptures are full of passages telling us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are to be a city on a hill and to stand out from the crowd. But you know what? That's hard. Being different is tough. But being different is exactly what the world needs. The world needs you and your unique gifts and talents. Let me say it again for the people in the back. The world needs you and your unique gifts and talents. Howard Thurman says it this way. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go and do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. I don't believe we can be fully alive if we are not being true to ourselves. Being true to ourselves can mean a number of things. Maybe it means getting out of unhealthy relationships. Maybe it means switching majors and choosing your heart's calling instead of what your parents expect you to do. Maybe being true to yourself means choosing to live authentically. I hope that each of you will think about what being true to yourself looks like. Consider what makes you come alive and chase after that. Because if we were all living out our gifts and talents authentically, the world would be a much better and brighter place. You all have gifts to offer the world. I hope that you will let others see them. Okay, now we're going to do things a little differently. I want you all to take out your cell phones. No, really, pull out your cell phones and hold them up. I know you all have them. Thank you. Th thank you. Loud and proud, right there. Thank you. Okay, now click the Instagram app, because you all got that too. Click the Instagram app. <clears throat> Shameless plug. Okay, now type in stressless weddings. It's right here. Real easy. Stressless weddings. Type it into that search bar, and now here's the most important part. Click follow. I'm not kidding. Click it. Click follow. No shame. Here's why. If you have any questions for today's message, you can ask me. If years from now you find yourself in a place of transition or grief, reach out to me because I'm here for you. Often we feel like there's no one who can understand our grief pain, and trauma. Well, I'm in your corner. Your professors are there for you. The counseling staff here is awesome. So I hope that you remember that you're not alone. Okay, now whoever has their cell phone out, put that away. That's rude. It's chapel. But really, put your phones away so you're in trouble. Okay. Thank you. But I am serious. If you have questions or if you're going through a time of grief, I want you to know that there's someone in your corner. I know that grief can be isolating and it can feel like no one else has ever felt the way you feel. But grief is something that everyone shares. We just handle it in different ways and it comes at us in different ways. So I want to encourage you in your lives and in all your relationships, I want you to know that you are not alone and that everyone struggles in life. 
And everyone can succeed as well. No matter what family you came from, what your life has been like, there is hope for you. And you're at a great place that truly cares. Carson Newman goes above and beyond for her students. So befriend a professor, check out BCM, or Best Buddies, or even the college ministry at this church. There are so many opportunities to get involved. So you don't have to be all alone in your dorm room. My prayer for you is that as we transition into this season of thankfulness and hope, that you will be filled with both, thankfulness and hope. I pray you find joy even in the grief. I pray you experience God in a deeper and more real way, and I pray you feel loved. Oh, so loved by those around you and by a creator who will never leave you. I pray you remember that you, yes you, are all so worthy of love and belonging. Now go into the world and love yourself well so you can have the strength and love to love those around you.